my gosh, you look gorgeous. Thank you. I didn't realize we're doing full faces. Like, <laughs> you look so beautiful. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am doing well. Oh my gosh. I, I just loved your voice note yesterday. So oh. I asked you to record because as I was thinking of us connecting today after so many years, I'm like, there's going to be a point where she says something like, oh, gosh, I wish I was recording this. So thank you for just accepting, you know, to just go ahead on camera and not knowing what we're going to talk about. But you know, let's just catch up. Um, you and I met somewhere between 2005 and 2007, because that's when I was at iTech. And then I moved to China. You left and you went to American Express. Yes. So I need you to reintroduce yourself to me. Like, <laughs> who is this woman? This was 15 years ago. That was, was it? Yes. It yeah. Was, it was, yeah, it was about 15 years ago. You're absolutely right. Yes. Okay. So tell me all your milestones. What did I miss since like 2007 up to today? Oh my gosh. Uh, 2007. I feel like I was a baby, you know, yes, I, I was I 21. Like, yeah. I felt like I was, I feel like I was a baby then. I, I feel like, um, I had a goal. Right. I had a mission. I had no idea how I was going to get there, but I knew I had a goal. Right. That, 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 that's where I was in 2007. I remember, tell me if you remember this. I had went out on vacation at ITAC, right? And I had did my resume and asked you to look over it because I had an interview at American Express <laughs> and you snuck and met me at the train station <laughs> Give me my resume. I didn't have a printer, and you printed it <laughs> and met me. And I think that was the last time we saw each other. Wow, probably, yeah. Because we spoke. I don't even know if we spoke. I think we chatted over LinkedIn, chatted over text, but I don't even think we picked up the we phone and chatted. spoke to each other since then. We chatted. I kept up with your blog while you were away. Thank so we you. were on these two different paths, but connected in some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's like 2000. When did you go to American Express? Eight, nine? It was about 2008. Okay. I went to Amex and I took a role as an executive assistant. I remember that. And again, <laughs> like not knowing what I'm going to do here, but I knew I needed to be here. Right. Yeah. I needed to start looking at different types of corporations and just like get my footing and figure out what it is that I liked and what I wanted to do. But what I didn't realize was there was actually something at ITAC um that I discovered I actually liked and enjoyed to do and that was just teaching and giving information and seeing people actually utilize the information to do something better yeah I didn't know it at the time but that was my thing right yeah. so when I got to and you Amex, good at your thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah that was the thing you know that one thing that you that you always find yourself doing no matter where you are and you actually enjoy it and that part doesn't necessarily feel like work to you yes that was that thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so at Amex, I came in as an administrative assistant. Um, and some way, somehow, over the years, I wound up in the compliance world within Amex. And the amazing thing about that um, experience is that I was actually on the compliance training side of mm -hmm. Amex. So that thing that's your thing, it's going to find its way to you. It's going to find its way back it's to you. It's going to keep finding its way to you no matter where you go. So um, I got into the global onboarding program and started to like work with new hires and, and, and figure out stuff like how do you get them in the right footing and, and teach them their way. Um, and Amex was really like the school of hard knocks for me because that's where I learned that I knew nothing about learning. Oh, wow. <laughs> right? I knew that I liked it. I knew that I wanted to be in it, but I knew nothing about adult learning principles and theories and how to pull and how to work with technology to build training curriculums and things like that. So that's where I was introduced to the whole world. Like, wow, it's bigger than standing in front of a class and like yeah. teaching materials and putting books together. Like there's an art and science to this. So that's where I learned a lot of my, um, my skills, you know, in trying to like put together learning and development programs and like how to teach people or how to train people around certain concepts and things. Right. And before you know it, like I think, believe I was at Amex for about eight years before I was ready to kind of make a transition mm -hmm. into something else. And that's when I, um, I started working at Spectrum. And yes. that's when I was actually uh, introduced to the sales world, right? So there's a learning and development part of the business that handles like all the HR related training and compliance training. But then when you get into sales, there's a sales readiness side that's a lot more colorful, a lot more playful. 
and you get to be a lot more innovative in that space. Mm -hmm. So once when I was introduced to that, it kind of just took off from there. So I was at, at Spectrum developing programs and then moved over to LinkedIn. And I've been at LinkedIn for about three years now. Um, and I think I said this in my voice, voice note, I've been doing some of the best work of my life. And yeah. I think that what makes it the best for me is that I, I, I know that I'm doing something that's actually gonna help someone else succeed. So that's my, that's that thing, you know, yeah. that, keeps, that that continues to push me. It's my way to kind of like give back and, and to do things to help someone else come up along the way. I love it. I love it. And you can see that I haven't changed. Like I'm not about the chit chat. I'm not about how's the weather. How are you? I know you're doing good. Um, <laughs> So I guess I should say that I am Roseanne Oakwe and I'm a life strategist and productivity coach and business coach. And this is my long lost, amazing friend, Denisha Green, as we affectionately call Danny. So Danny is killing out here in these streets. And <laughs> she sent me a voice recording yesterday, which is her updates. And, you know, it was like, oh, this is what's going on. Da, da, da. But there was so much love, peace, joy, and passion in your voice note. And that's why when we said we're going to connect today by phone, I'm like, you know what, let's just get on video. Let's just get on. And I'm going to record this because something amazing is going to come out of this. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you've been talking so about so far was this whole theme of passion and purpose, right? So it's like you've been comfortable with doing your pivots, but your purpose was always there. Yeah. And I think you nailed it. Like, you know exactly what that is. So at iTech, it was, I know I had a goal, I know I needed to get somewhere. I wasn't quite sure where that was, but I was going to figure it out or uncover, if you will, right? You were going to discover it. Yeah. Um, but one of the other things that I loved about your voice note yesterday is you mentioned how grounded you felt and how at peace you felt. Tell me some more about like where you were and like how you got to this place of just being so grounded. Like what was this self-discovery yeah. like? Yeah. Um, I, I think me finding this grounding was a lot about failures. Right. So we talk about a lot of the successes that we have and we listen to a lot of conversations like, wow, that sounds amazing. I would love to be there. But what people don't necessarily talk about are the failures. Right. And it's the failures that the learning happens within those failures. Right. So um, and I can tell you about a couple of those. Like, and that's what helps with the grounding. Right. Yeah, so there's, yeah. a, there's a professional side and there's a personal side as well where those things actually kind of come come at play together. Yeah. Um, and that's when you're really going to know, you're really going to learn about yourself. That's when you figure out who you are, right? So I came into MX um, with my high school diploma, right? Um, and was working my butt off and couldn't figure out why all of these promotions were going past me. I couldn't make it to the next level. And I'm busting my butt and everyone's telling me how amazing it is to work with me. But at the same, sorry, I, I have a fur baby. This is the virtual <laughs> world kind of, she has me well-trained. Let me let her in. <laughs> no worries. I <laughs> wish when she's, when she's ready. Yeah, no, you're fine. <laughs> Uh, so uh, at, at Amex, uh, I came in, I, I was trying to figure out like passing, being passed over for these promotions and I want to be in these different roles, but it's just not happening. Um, and I had a really great mentor at the time uh, who actually turned out to be my boss at some point. Um, but uh, actually, I mean, that's my, my leader, my, my partner, right? I'm trying to get away from that boss, but my partner at some point. Um, and he encouraged me to go back to school. And he said, listen, we as a company, we pay for it, right? Um, you've just got to be up for that challenge. You know, I was married at the time. I had two small kids and this is a nine to five at the end of the day. You still have to get your work done. Um, and I did just that. You know, I said, you know what, if, if, if the company's footing the bill and this is the, this is the hurdle that's getting me from that next point, let me just do this, right? So I did it. I went to, um, I went to Moreau College um, and I, I did online learning. And uh, I, I graduated uh, at the top of my class and I, my kids were able to see me walk across the stage and that was a major accomplishment for me. But I had to fail through a couple of being passed over for promotions, not necessarily making as much money as, as I should have been making at that point in time, but I didn't have the, the degree to kind of support those type of pushes that, that, my, uh, that my partner wanted to do for me at that point in time. So that was a, that was a failure, right? Um, I also think about uh, where I came from, you know, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, anyone that is from Brooklyn has that Brooklyn. rough edge. <laughs> yeah, you have that rough edge. We're, we're a little rough around the edges, right? So how how do you how did I channel some of that 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 ruggedness into the corporate world? I had to figure that out as well. Yeah. So you can get angry at something like how do you articulate yourself in those situations? You know, how do you how do you own the room and own your presence and own your seat at the table? 
um, and showing it in a, in a different way. I had to figure out how to balance those things out. You know, and still way. be authentic, right? Because you yes. don't want to feel like you were hiding a, a part of you. Yes. Exactly. So that's a challenge. And, and, exactly. And as a <laughs> Black woman, that's even more cha challenging, right? Yeah. So um, I, I had to figure those things out. You know, I had to I had to fell forward in a lot of meetings and a lot of presentations, not not necessarily knowing, you know, how to how to present my best self. You know, mm -hmm. and, and there were a lot of failures along the way, but you figure out, okay, what didn't work, right? Why didn't this work? And what skills can I actually put myself, what positions can I put myself in to make that better, right? Yeah. Terrible at public speaking, wanted to do it, uh, but every time I got an opportunity to, it was a disaster, right? So I enrolled myself in a program called, called Toastmasters yes. to help me with those presentation skills, right? So it's all about figuring out like, you know, having those failures, figuring out why you failed and then putting the pieces back together to figure out like, what's the lesson in this and how do I make sure that this doesn't happen again? Or how do I put myself in a better position for the next time? Yeah. So it, was, it was a lot of those, you know, that happened. And on the, the, the personal side as well, and I went into to Amex uh, married, um, I left separated and, and having to start all over from that perspective, right? So being a mom and going from actually having a partner and being a two family income to you know, leaving that relationship and that situation with just the clothes on my back and my kids and starting yeah. brand new, right? So that, that takes a, a extreme amount of courage to do those things too. But it was the failure of that marriage that said, you know what, at the end of the day, it's me and these babies and I have to figure it out. And yeah. by any means necessary, like we're, we're going to do this. So, you know, it's those, it's those challenges along the way that, uh, that, that puts you in positions where you're either going to allow the challenge to stop your growth right? Or use the challenge as a, as, a, as a stepping stool and a catalyst to get you to that next point. Like that's the decision that you right. have to make when those things happen. Dropping gems. That is a decision because there's so many nuggets that you dropped. When you talked about failing forward, that's one of my favorite topics because whenever you hear these success stories, I'm like, there's some chapters missing. Like, tell me the whole story. Tell me about the days when you didn't believe in yourself. Tell me about the days when you felt like giving up. So when you talk about putting the pieces together, that's what it is. It's not just you wake up every day and it's sunshine and it's unicorns and it's rainbows. Some days it's like that, but some days it's not. And I feel like people like you will thrive during a pandemic because you realize this is just another disruption. It's just another disruption, right? So when you talk about failing forward, I'm like, that is the key to success. Like, you know, let's just get in there, jump in there and, you know, fail, figure it out. There's this one um, disinfectant, I think it's 409 that it's, that it's called. The reason it was called 409 is because it took them 408 failed formulas wow. before they got it. Now, I can't say that I was going to stay, stick around that long. I'm like, all right, this is 10 time. This is just not it. This is not my lane, you know, but yeah. to have someone do something for 408 times and then perfect it on the 409th try, that is a story of success. But, you know, you don't hear those stories that much in terms of failure. You just hear about, oh, these overnight successes. Yeah, not really. It wasn't overnight. Nope. <laughs> it wasn't overnight. But, yeah, I'm glad that you had the forward sight to understand that this was just a part of the journey, right? So, you know, you had destination to get to, and you know that there would be some obstacles. You know that there would be some things that you had to jump over, jump through, climb around, you know, do whatever you needed to do. But you right. didn't give up. And I think that's the beauty of your story, too. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. So in terms of you just being so grounded and so peaceful and so happy, it reminded me of a question that we ask kids all the time and that I, people used to ask me all the time. And that simple question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. And I remember at one point someone asked me that and I said, happy. And they kind of looked at me like, okay, so what else? Lawyer, you know, doctor. And I think because of that response, eventually when people started to ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would give them the answer they were looking for. I would mm -hmm. say lawyer. I would say all these different things mm -hmm. because once you said that, then they were satisfied. Yeah. But in my heart of hearts, all I wanted to be was happy. Mm -hmm. So whether that came from me being a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, a coach, whatever, that's, that was my ultimate goal and purpose. The reason I didn't feel so confident to say it because it sounded frivolous. It sounded shallow. Like, really? You just want to be happy? Mm -hmm. And then you think of these celebrities or these multi-million dollar people who are jumping off cliffs. And I'm not talking about cliff jumping. I'm talking about suicide. Mm -hmm. You have everything that the world told you would make you happy and successful. And you're still not quote unquote right. happy, you know? Right. 
So I, so I'm still at my job, you know, I've been there for 10 years and I realized that I put my happiness second place and I put stability first. Mm -hmm. So having this job that was going to give me a pension, that was going to give me, you know, all these amazing things in the package, that's what I put first. Mm -hmm. But then when you think of it, that was me operating out of fear instead of saying, what is it that I really need to do? So now I'm just like, you know what? I put in my 10 years. Thank you for my pension. You are my investor. I'm just going to look at you as my investor because you're allowing me to invest in myself personally to travel the world. You're allowing me to invest into my business with mm-hmm. a stable job so I can do other things. Yeah. So while I don't regret it, I just want everyone to understand that sometimes we make these choices and while it may seem like strategy or it may seem like a successful step, a lot of times it's based out of fear or it's based yeah. out of what society has told us is the blueprint. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely right. And and to, to be honest, like even as adults, right, that, like that question, what do you want to be when you grow up? It changes, right? We as mm-hmm. people change. It changes every five to seven years. You you have different interests. You have different things that 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 motivate you. Your your goals absolutely change. So you know, to 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 dock yourself to a certain career to say this is what I want to be or this is what I want to do. Not necessarily Ever. tapping into that happiness piece, like what actually drives you yeah. out of what you do is actually going to feel like work. So I think that the, the art and science of it is like figuring out like where that stability lies, right? Mm-hmm. But also like how can you find happiness in that stable place? Right? Like is, is, there, is there another position within uh, your organization that would be more fulfilling to you, right? Mm-hmm. Or is this a stepping stone to my next life? Right. Is it a stepping stone to what I want to do next? So all those things know definitely play a part into mm-hmm. like how you figure out what your path is yeah. but it all stuff like I, I say pay very close attention to the things that you do at work that 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 don't feel like work like that's the, the, exactly that, that's usually your thing that that you'll be you know the best at because it's your niche right it's, it's like how you how you like like what what drives you and what actually fulfills you at the same time so it's it's, it's a tricky it's a tricky path you know it is. at the end of the day the bills still got to get paid right so it's like mm-hmm. you know, how do you how do you figure these things out and I think a lot of it comes with time you know and doing that that soul search searching I have what I call um, a, a personal counsel I have like three or four people that know me very very well. So before any opportunity, like I'm always like, you know me, like, what do you think about this, right? Like those people usually can point you into the direction of the things that you actually love to do because they see it. And then they see the passion that you actually feel, feel when you're actually doing those things. So paying attention to what that is, is usually the key. And then, you know, also knowing that what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, I'm, I'll be 40 years old this year, right? And that changes, right? I, yeah. I, I don't know what I want to be, but I know what I want to do. Yeah, like that, that's mm-hmm. the difference. Like, I don't know what that title is, right? But I know that I feel my best when I'm being innovative, when I'm being creative, and, and when I'm helping people. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Whatever title that is, let it be what it be what it is. But these are the things that I like to do. This is what makes me happy. No, that's really good. And you know, when you started talking about your passion and that one thing, yeah. that's how I feel about coaching. Like I've gotten off a coach and call them like, I can't believe so much has paid me for this. Like, I feel so good. Like, I feel full. I feel like I gave my all. I'm like, I would do this for free. Like I would legit do this for free. And the interesting thing is that you mentioned that it's tricky and it really is because there's so many nuances, right? You have the extreme suggestion or I guess right now it's fodder for commencement speech where everyone says, follow your passion. And you're like, well, I want to do art and and I'm struggling or I want to be, you know, like, I'm not about the struggle life. I'm about strategy. But at the same token, this follow your passion can be so misleading because like you said, we have stable bills. So we need to be strategic about what we're doing. So yes, I want to find my one thing. Yes, I want to find my passion. Yes, I want to find or uncover what I was meant to do in terms of my purpose. But at the same time, we have to give a more balanced view or balanced advice. So when you said it's tricky and you talked about those nuances, I felt like it was such a harmonious view of what really happens because ultimately you do want to be in your purpose. You want to work in your passion, but maybe following your passion initially is, is okay. Let's say this way. There's this concept called be, do have Mm -hmm. a lot of people think that if you can be rich, successful, X, Y, Z, then you can do the things that you want to be and then you'll have all the things that you, you want, right? Like whether it's a car or da-da-da. So with the be do have principle, sometimes we flip it 
were like, well, if I could have a car or if I can have this relationship, then I'll be able to do everything that I want and then I'll be happy. But I think what you're saying is the right way of the motto where you say, well, find out what you're good at, find out what gives you purpose, find out what makes you happy, and then try to attach that title to it, right? So it's yep. not the material things. It's not necessarily yep. the title. Yep. yep. So. Because when you figure out like what, what makes you happy, right? And, and what, what's that skill set that you have that, that makes you feel like it isn't work, nine times out of 10, you're the best at that thing. Yeah. Right? You're going to be the, so you're when natural. You're, like, you're natural, right? So the money will follow, right? right. Yeah. You just got to find the right opportunity to put that, put yourself in the space where you're doing that one thing. We actually going to get paid for doing that thing, right? Exactly. So figuring out where that is. Is, 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 is the key to it, right? So yeah, so, yeah, so it, examples, like if, if it's public speaking, you absolutely love public speaking, right? And you're in a, in a, in a, in a job where that, those opportunities aren't necessarily a, available, it's finding ways to dock yourself to it, yes. right? So like if there's something going on where I can position myself or volunteer to help, where one, I'm actually practicing that skill, but then also letting others become aware that, hey, she can do this, those doors are going to continue to to open within time. Absolutely. Right? Like yeah. nothing happens by coincidence. Like everything sets you up for that next step. And I'll tell you an, an example. Um, I was at Amex, right? And I was working, I, I, I was dying to be one of these facilitators on around this communications training. Yeah. And I would raise my hand to help. Listen, I'll do books. I'll do whatever it is. Like, give me a couple slides. I can talk to this. I can do this. I can do that. And I never got the opportunity, right? So what happened was we would always do this, this class in person and I had access to the materials, right? So what I did was I actually recorded a virtual version of the same exact class, like right? using PowerPoint and I used um, Adobe Connect just to record it. And just to show to, to, my, to my peers, like, hey, we could actually go to the virtual space and make these available via videos. But I was sneakily just showing my skill set at the same time. They passed over me for that opportunity. But I will tell you this, when I went to LinkedIn, right, and I had to submit a portfolio, you know, I took that same virtual training that I did and submitted it as a piece for my portfolio to get into LinkedIn to show that I actually had these facilitation skills. So although my partners over at MX passed on me for the opportunity, I was still able to use that and put myself in a position where I said, okay, you don't want me for this, that's fine. I'm going to take it. I'm going to build something out of it. And now I have it some, Now I have it as a piece of a portfolio that got right. me into my next opportunity, right? So it's like, you, it, it's things like that, like being creative and, and finding ways to position yourself. Yeah. So it might be a no right now for someone else. But you for someone else. In those doors, right? So yeah. the yes is going to happen, especially if it's something that you're passionate about. I say don't give up on that in, in any way, shape, or form. Like find ways to make it work within your current system. No, that's so good. So even when you were talking about like finding that thing, it makes me think of when you go to an interview and someone will say, oh, so, you know, what do you like to do? And the person will respond, I like to help people. And I'm like, <sighs> like, really? But then what they're not realizing is that that can go in so many different directions. A doctor helps people. A vet helps owners of animals, you know? Um, people who work in a supermarket help people. People who work in a pharmacy help people. So I think what happens is that's how we need to, if we're trying to mentor someone and they give that generic answer, that's when we need to start to dig and say, well, what does that look like? Is it working in a bookstore? Is it helping an old lady cross the street? Is it working in a nursing home? What kind of people do you like to help? Is it babies? Is it um, seniors? So I think just understanding that it's not necessarily about the title is helpful because when you talked about your personal and professional pivots, if you were so gung-ho on your title, once you lost title of wife or title of Amex, whatever, or ITAC, whatever that title was, once you lost hold of that, then that's when you lose yourself yep. because you're attached to the title. Yep. Like I have people at my job who will call me and they'll lead in with, hi, this is title X. And I'm like, your title is not in your birth certificate. Like, what is your name, please? You know, or you'll have people who always lead them with like, hi, I'm the executive director or I am the CEO. Okay, great. What's your name? <laughs> you know, like what, what did your mama name you? Yeah. So I just yep. think once we start to separate ourselves and just kind of shed those titles, yeah. we'll be in a better place. And that will, then we'll be able to move with our purpose. So yeah. it's not that you can only work your purpose at Amex, you can bring it anywhere because you figured out, you pinpointed what that thing was. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And even bigger than the title and, and, and what do you want to do? It's like, what are you getting out of these? Like, what are you, what are you looking to get out of this? So if, you, if your goal is to, it, it, like, what do you want to do? I, oh, I want this because I want to help people. What are you getting out of that? Like, because mm -hmm. no matter what it is that, that no matter where we are, where we position ourselves, like, I want to do this one thing, there has to be something that you're getting out of it. Like, and that one thing is what's going to continue to drive you, right? Like, that's where the passion comes from. So this yeah. is the do part, right? But what's driving me to want to do this is, is, mm -hmm. is what's really important because that's where the passion is. Like that's what that's where the passion is what's going to make you get up every day. And that's the thing that makes it not feel like work. It's like, I right. know that if I continue to do this one thing, this is where my cup is going to continue to overflow. Like this is what, this is how it's fueling and filling me at the same time. Yeah. No, that's so good. I'm going to ask you a question and you can answer either for your... 17 year old or your 20 year old or your 30 year old self or you can just answer to the world okay. so based on all the pivots that you've made on in your life based on everything you've learned all your lessons learned what would you either tell other people you know based on what you've learned or what would you tell your younger self uh what a tell okay what, i'll start with myself right what, what would i tell my younger self um, I would say to continue to look towards that North Star, right? Like no matter what's happening or no matter how your world is shaking, you know, because it's going to shake and it's going to continue to shake, like never forget, you know, where that North Star is, never forget what your goals are and where you're trying to go, right? And, and, and have people around you that are going to support you and keep you hold you accountable to that vision of where you want to go like we can have a whole gang of yes people around us right but i think the the, the key is having folks around you that care enough to keep you on that path to care enough to tell you when you're messing up to tell you to to, to be there to pat you on your back along the way to say great job that's like remember you said you were going to do this i see you doing it like that acknowledgement is important uh having that trust circle knowing that you're going to continue to fail right but you've got to keep picking yourself back up and you got to keep marching towards your goals and most importantly like beyond all of that when you get there remember who you were when you started right because there are other people that are in those same positions that could use that helping hand to come up, right? So never forget, never forget that. Um, and I think those, those things definitely come from my parents, um, just seeing how they were always so helpful and always willing to reach back no matter what it is that they had. Um, those, are, those are things that I would tell myself. I would give myself those, those, those tips, like you're gonna fall, right? That's this, this natural, you're gonna fall. Pick yourself back up, uh, keep yourself aligned to your goals. Right, and surround yourself with people that are going to help you do those two things. Right, yeah. like those people that are going to hold you accountable and and also be there to support you uh, as you're trying to to reach your destination. I love that! Yay. Okay, so current self. So it was older self, and who else would I? Who else? Would I and then just like, what would you tell someone if you were mentoring someone, or what would you tell someone yeah. listening to this? Um, you know, just like your biggest tip or your biggest lessons learned. Uh, so that's what I would tell. I, I think I would tell uh, other folks the same thing. You know, I, I don't think it differs. Like, I, mm -hmm. I think it would be like a lot of the things that, that I just talked about, like figuring out like what drives you, what, what feeds your soul, yeah. right? Like, let's forget about the do, let's forget about the titles, let's forget about the money for a second, let's fi figure out what's going to feed your soul because the title and the money is not going to feed your soul. It's like, not. it needs to start there. Right, so so figure out what feeds you, what feeds your soul, what drives you, and then have a plan. Like, mm -hmm. okay, this is what you, like it, I can have all the goals in the world, but if I don't have a plan on how to accomplish those goals, and I don't have that same support system to hold me accountable to, yeah. to, 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 to that plan, then it, it's all it is is a goal and a dream, right? It's nothing that I'm actually going to put put to the feet to the fire to actually accomplish. So I, I would say those same rules, you know, re really apply. Like just finding yourself, finding what feeds you. And then also reevaluating that over time, right? Because what feeds me today might not feed me as much tomorrow, right? So how do I continue to pivot and evolve and, and, and bring myself to those places to where I'm completely and absolutely grounded and, and working within my purpose? So that, like you said earlier, that grounding, that peace, yeah. I think that I've finally gotten that way 
because I figured out what my what my what my purpose is. Like I, I figured out what I want to do and, and and how these things are feeding me and fueling me at the same time. So once yeah. when I made that magical connection, all the doors just started to 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 open for me because I started operating within that purpose. I started operating within the things that are actually feeding my soul, which actually allows people to see me in a bigger and better way. So I'm, I'm, I'm showing up my, my best self in everything that I'm touching right now. And, and also knowing that there's always growing to do. You've never, you're never done, right? You're never done until you actually leave this earth, right? So there's, there's still work to do. How do you continue to grow yourself? You know, how do you continue to see uh, what other people are doing in the industry? How do I remain competitive in my space? Um, because you can lose that if you get too comfortable. Right. All these are different things that you that you figure out along the way. Um, but the biggest thing for me that I would tell anybody that's trying to like figure out their path and figure out what they want to do, figure out what feeds your soul first. All those other things are going to come naturally after you figure that piece out because that's your bread and butter. Come in, Danny Green. I love it. <laughs> this is everything. So yes, you just have to keep me posted on when that book is coming out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> good stuff thank you so so much for sharing all of these gems this was amazing amazing it was so good catching up with you honey it was absolutely great to catch up with you so 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 far and long overdue but i'm glad it happened and like i said we've stayed connected along the amongst the years and in, in other ways and i've seen a couple of your uh your, your uh recorded uh uh, sessions that you've had on coaches. I've seen you in action, girl. I, I, I read your, your emails and your posts. I've been watching your blogs. I'm like your, your secret watcher, but I'm such a fan. I'm so, so happy to be speaking with you. And I'm so amazed at all the things that you've been doing. Up all oh, thank you, honey.